Hi, Brass Facts here. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. No B-roll, fancy drone footage. Just me at a table with a drink. It's a white Russian if you give a shit. I've been digging it recently. Wanted some more sugary drinks, I guess, if you want to call it. Sweeter drinks. I have a lot of higher production value videos coming out, but those have about a... Um, they're about two-thirds the way done, so soon. And hopefully I can find a Strybog. I swear, they just don't exist. If you hear sniffing in the background, that's my dog. I had to steal her bone from her because she was making way too much noise. I'm sorry. All right. As, uh, as the title implies, I'll be talking about what I think is mandatory on a rifle. I've decided to make this video since friends of mine are getting into guns, and honestly, a lot of new shooters are getting into it. Um, as well as you kind of see the plethora of dudes showing off their guns at protests, in defense of property, whatever, and they're basically stock rifles, which is fine. I mean, you're getting out there, hell yeah. But I feel like there can be a lot learned in a video like this. As I always say, this is my opinion and you should take it as such. Simply a data point of one. If what you hear here conflicts with you, that's fine. It's bound to happen. And if you get some value added out of this, awesome. I've come to this conclusion via a ton of shooting, force and force, and a little bit of critical thinking. Critical thinking. But anyway, let's get to the topic at hand. Restated, it's what are critical additions to a brand new stock rifle. Obviously in front here, we don't have a stock rifle and I have a lot of extra stuff that I won't be talking about today. And extra add-ons beyond this are obviously fine, right? They add value added. But these are specific attachments which make a rifle go from a hobby thing to a true fighting rifle, a defensive rifle, a modern sporting rifle, a sole rifle, Semi-fully automatic ghost gun? Whatever you want to call it. These additions make a no-bullshit fighting rifle centered around close-range engagements or home defense, which are suddenly a lot more relevant in the uh, when you consider events recently. Like I said, further additions are certainly valued added, but not to the degree these three following are. Hence why I call them mandatory. So first off, sighting systems. This probably comes to no surprise to anyone. You need a way to aim the rifle. Instinctive shooting does not cut it. You can use something like a red dot. You can use something like iron sights. Yes, I know this rifle doesn't actually currently have a front sight. Just swapped out the D-ball, which had a built-in sight. Don't worry about it. Or, so red dot or iron sights. Don't need both. Fixed powers like an ACOG or a variable power LPVO kind of thing like this Trichicon TR-24. I have videos on all of those setups. Just look at my channel. There's not that many videos. You'll find it. I'll make the argument though, if this is your first rifle, um, probably stick with a red dot. It's by far the easiest to use, generally cheaper than the other options, and is much more natural for someone that doesn't really shoot a lot and has issues lining up properly behind a scope. So just put the dot on the target, bang, you don't need to worry about proper eye box usage. Etc. Good starting points for the the good starting points for a red dot would be an EOTech, Aimpoint, Trichicon, Holosun. I'm sure I've missed some, but this isn't really a video about specific products. More so philosophy of what you want in your rifle. I'll just say avoid open emitters where possible and resist the temptation to hunt something like a hunting scope or like that ACOG I showed you earlier. Um, it may be easier to shoot at stuff at static ranges, that is, shoot at paper targets at your local range. But for when you need it the most, it is far more cumbersome uh, at close ranges, specifically for a novice shooter. Once you get more time on the platform, by all means, branch out, get that stuff I showed you earlier, build a dedicated long setup with a second rifle, whatever. But for a first time shooter, probably stick with the red dot. Okay, moving on. Number two. You need a flashlight, no excuse. This is probably a little controversial to some people, but hear me out, I guess. For a primary fighting rifle, you need the ability to target ID in a, well, all environments, but the flashlight specifically, dark environments. Not having this ability is basically negligence in my eyes and shows you aren't really serious about it. What you see right here is a Protoc HL. Uh, I have it set up so I can use my finger to engage it easily without having to shift my hand very much. But that's mainly because this is a night vision setup. My other guns have specifically, or for example, this one 
I have it on a tape switch so I can actuate it whenever I want. Doesn't add any more time, gives me the light instantly. In a home defense scenario, while you probably can navigate your house in the dark, you need the ability to be sure what you're engaging is indeed a threat and not a drunk college student that is in the wrong house. It only takes a split second to turn on your light, should you have it properly set up, which you should, to confirm and then engage or not engage your target. At minimum, it helps you line up a better shot, a central nervous system shot, if you will, than aiming at a silhouette, hitting an armor completely missing because you didn't see the silhouette properly, and then have your target scurry to a dark corner, and now you're playing hide and seek where getting found means getting shot in the face. Obviously not desirable. Even beyond home defense scenarios for intermediate, shit at the fan, civil unrest, boogaloo, I don't know what we're calling it nowadays, the same thing applies. The light, assuming you have a light worth of shit, allows you to control unknowns who are may not have fully materialized as full-on uh, threats, but allow you to control them with a non-lethal option, in this case a light. Be careful with that because this is quasi-brandishing territory. No, I'm gonna get it. not getting into that. Suddenly getting blasted in the face with 1,000 to 1,500 uh, lumens is a very strong deterrent, especially if they didn't see you initially. And once again, assuming the world hasn't gone to shit, you need to be able to properly articulate that you used your rifle or your lethal force in a justifiable scenario. You need to be sure the target you're engaging is indeed a threat and properly line up a shot. And since most of what we're seeing going on right now happens at night, you need a light. Preferably a modern high lumen light. As I mentioned, this is the ProTac HL. It's about 650 lumens, a unit for measuring light. The other ones I showed you are the HLX, same company, just a little bit more power, and those are about a thousand lumens, so about a fourth more powerful. Even going further to a full blown civil collapse, you still need a light. Once again, in dark indoor fighting, you need to be able to light up an area momentarily to find out what's going on and to properly engage. All the notions of giving away your position are kind of misplaced. You choose when the light goes on. Giving your away your position in an indoors environment is generally pretty irrelevant if it allows you to properly target ID and then allow yourself to follow the use of the light with a bunch of 62 grain slugs going at 3200 feet per second at 0.3 splits. And if you're in a scenario where the white light will truly compromise your situation, just don't use it. It's that simple. But there's no excuse not to have it on the rifle in the first place. Finally, a sling. A sling is also mandatory. The one you're looking at here is the VCAS, I believe. Vickers Combat Application Sling or something. Uh, I mainly actually use the VTAC sling right here. Vikings Tactic Sling. I prefer this one more. I'll probably do a video on why I use slings, so on and so forth. And when you see these slings, you may balk at the price of like $50 for a piece of nylon, but uh, I'll probably cover that in a different video as to why I prefer this versus, I don't know, 550 paracord tied to my rifle. But there are certainly cheaper options. A sling is to the rifle as a holster is to a pistol. We all laugh at full-blown gangsters shoving, you know, a Glock down their pants. Um, and to me, having a rifle without a sling is similar. Not, not obviously as hardcore, but similar. Beyond the fact that it is a useful transportation device, you're going from place to place, you sling it on your back, you don't have to hold the rifle, right? You're up in the mountains, sometimes you don't want your rifle out front, lets you sling it. The sling lets you prevent the loss of your weapon in a CQB environment, which is generally what home defense is. Uh, that is, a person can't take the rifle from you. It also takes weight off of your arms and allows you to keep the rifle in a semi-ready position and you're not shifting it around constantly. It lets you properly transition to your sidearm, that is to your pistol, without either dropping the rifle in the dirt, which is less than desirable because you want that thing, uh, or having to shoot the sidearm one-handed. It allows you to apply first aid to yourself and others without dropping the rifle once again. Um, it also allows you to call first responders after you drop that college student in your house because you didn't have a light and you're keeping pressure on his sucking chest wound. Another good useful fact. It lets you stow your weapons to do stuff, like administrative stuff, which happen a lot, both in training and real life. It lets you eat a Snickers bar and allows you to microwave your Hot Pockets as you're LARPing in your basement with your brand new kit. All important things. You need a sling. 
Uh, of the things I've mentioned so far, the rifle is technically still functional without a sling, but honestly, not having a sling shows me that the user most likely never really uses the rifle beyond static drills at the range, and thinks having a rifle is 99% shooting, while in reality, it's the exact opposite. What slings? Um, as I mentioned the brands earlier, I'll skip over that and I'll have a dedicated video for that, but I, I honestly recommend a two-point sling over a one-point sling. While a one-point sling is generally initially the most attractive, it is the least cumbersome, it doesn't get in the way, requires little training, it kind of cuts off the ability to do half the things I've already mentioned. And to me, they're really only relevant for static range stuff where you just don't want to deal with a sling, or for small subgun usage, not relevant in this conversation. With a little training and a proper setup, that is, it's adjusted correctly via length, a two-point sling can be used in a very similar fashion as a one-point sling and then transition to two-point slings usage. I think this is the third time I'm going to say this, but I'll have a video on it. Anyways, that's it. I don't know why I have this rifle out here. I've like referenced it twice, but uh, I'm sure I've pissed off some people as well, but eh, if a random dude on the internet annoys you, you should probably reevaluate your life choices. That being said, I hope this video helped you out. Uh, either make your rifle, reevaluate your setup, or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you're just bored. And for the dudes out there who, after a long day of work, put on kit and are defending local businesses, hell yeah, rock on. That's what this is all about, right? So, anyways, have a nice night and uh, prost.